Well, hi ladies, I'm Mary Louise Bowers and I am currently serving as the coordinator of women's discipleship at First Pres. And um, I just wish that I could be with you in person today, but I was delighted when Jeannie asked me if I would do a short devotion video for you as you um, think through prayer uh, for your prayer week. And so uh, I wanna talk today a little bit about what unceasing prayer looks like. When I was first uh, starting ministry, and this is many moons ago when I was in a youth ministry internship, I was invited by one of the students in the youth group to go to a lake with her on a holiday. And I declined the invitation. I thought, it's just gonna be a bunch of girls being silly and hanging out, and I don't need to be there. And when I told that to the gentleman who was the youth minister at the time, he said, mm-mm, quantity time. Quantity time is very important in ministry because it's how you get to quality time. So he said, you don't have to go, you don't have to accept this particular invitation, but know that in order to achieve quality time with students, you have to have quantity time. And I think that's very similar in terms of unceasing prayer with the Lord. So God wants our quantity time. He wants our whole lives. And that will ultimately enrich our worship, our time in his word, our times of fellowship with other believers, because it's us inviting him in. So let's talk for a minute about what quantity time with the Lord does not look like. Well, we know from Matthew 6 that uh, it doesn't look like making sure that other people see you praying a lot. Um, and it also doesn't look like heaping up empty words. So it's not just praying for the sake of praying, and it's not praying so that you make sure everybody knows you're praying. Um, what does quantity time look like? Well, it really looks like privacy and, and quiet, um, inviting the Lord into, your, into the quiet spaces, the um, private moments of your life. And I think also we see from Scripture, both in um, 1 Thessalonians 5 and Philippians 4 and, and other places as well, that uh, this quantity time with the Lord um, ha carries with it a sense of thanksgiving and joy on our parts. And so as we look at what that would practically look like, I think a good example is to think through um, if I take a picture with a celebrity on social media, I'm probably, uh, I may post that picture and it may look really cool that I'm there with a celebrity, but it's not indicative of any real relationship with that celebrity. And in the same way, uh, if we pray before other people or pray using sort of empty words as the scripture describes them, um, we may be spending time in the act of prayer um, but it's not indicative of a real genuine relationship with the Lord. However, if I am, I have four daughters, the youngest is four and the oldest is 11. And um, even this morning, one of my daughters was upset because she had had an argument with her sisters. And I found myself just saying, okay, Lord, please be with us as we talk through this situation. And I even encouraged her to invite the Lord in because when we invite the Lord into those difficult moments or the calm moments, the busy moments, <laughs> whatever, when we invite the Lord into those moments, we develop a real relationship with him. We're not doing things hidden and in secret. We're doing things with the Lord. We're engaged with the Lord and he is always with us. So if he is always with us, we can always access him. So my encouragement to you today is to invite the Lord into those quiet, secret, private places in your life. Invite him where you might be inclined to be frustrated. Invite him to sit in your car with you um, and, have, and have that moment to chat. Um, pray without ceasing. Don't stop. He's always there. He's always accessible. Um, so invite him not to be seen before men, not with empty, meaningless words, but invite him to be a part of, of your life. And I'm, I think we see evidence that 
if we're doing that on a daily basis, our experience as we worship him corporately is richer. We're, we're more ready. So ladies, um, I am delighted that you're having a week to celebrate prayer, to emphasize prayer. Um, and I do hope that at the end of the week, you find yourself um, with renewed enthusiasm. Prayer can be hard, um, but it is good and rewarding and definitely part of a real relationship with the Lord.